Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, going on a five second rant. We just did a whole <laughs> oh, review. And, a, and the mic going on. <laughs> <laughs> Pop the SD card in the computer and this is all you would... <laughs> Listen, but we, we, hey, we, we can't cry with spilled milk. Yeah. Let's get into your honor for this week. I think it's episode, oh, what's part seven? Part seven? Part seven, man. Listen, so y'all know on last week, we left off where the judge was telling Daddy Bastard was like, listen, your son about to get picked up. And because he's about to get picked up, I'm going to make sure that once he is locked up and that he goes to trial, I'm going to be the judge presiding over his case and I will make him walk. So we see on this week that we got Daddy Baxter going in and out of traffic, driving his car like there is no tomorrow. And I'm sitting here on the edge of my seat because I'm like, Daddy Baxter, you about to put somebody else's family through exactly what you just went mm -hmm. through because you about to hit and kill somebody because he's trying to get to the Baxter Hotel because he knows that at any moment, if what the judge said is true, my son is about, about to, to get, get locked up. up. So yep. he's trying to call Carlo, and Carlo is looking at his phone, seeing that his daddy is calling him, and turning it over. Yep. Like, oh, whatever. And he's oh, calling he him back now. to back to back. And he's just like, whatever. And his homeboy, the one that he put the fentanyl patch on, he over there in the passenger oh, side nodding. I actually thought he passed out. He basically did, though. He, he nodded. Was he nodded out like that, <laughs> like that white girl did that was in my in all y'all high. If huh. y'all ain't never seen that, we might link that video down below. <laughs> well, we woke up in the morning and had a white girl in our yard. Yeah, she we was, thought she was dead. I was like, Lord, please don't let no dead white girl we be had in like, our yard. We had like 20 <laughs> cops out yeah. here. It was a lot. But yeah. anyway, so eventually Daddy Baxter left his son Carlo a message on his phone and was like, do not go to the hotel. You are about to be arrested. Well, what did Carlo do? Never check the messages. Nope. Never answered the phone. Goes to the Baxter Hotel and boom. Daddy Baxter is probably about two blocks away. He sees SWAT and everybody else, all the people, all the ones that should have been at the Capitol arresting those. He saw all of them <laughs> heading towards the Baxter Hotel and he knew it was about to go down. His son was about to be arrested. What happened? Carlo was arrested. With Moe's $150,000 and $10 on his, in his possession. His homeboy, he straightened up real quick from that fentanyl patch. <laughs> he skimmed me the shimmy out the side of the door. He ended up at this trap house look like. I'm not sure what he's doing, what he, cause, but he had a bag on him. I think it might have been some of them fentanyl packs, though. It, it yeah. was something. So we, we haven't heard or seen the last of that. Yeah. But we definitely have Carlos locked up right now. Even Mama Baxter, the cops was telling her, you need to stand back. And she just walking towards them like, who going to make me? Yeah, and who going to, what's one of y'all bad enough to shoot me? I was like, shoot her. Like, she scares me. Like, she, she, she's the one. Yeah. I think if I was in a room with both of them, I could talk to Daddy Bastard and talk him off a ledge. That one right there, not her. Not her hmm, at all. Hmm, hmm. So, okay. We, we got Carlos locked up. So, we see that Nancy, somebody gave me an easy way to remember her name. Because I was like, I can't remember this cop's name to save my life. They was like, oh, from Sax, from Power. Yeah. His, his nickname is Nancy. Yep. I said, all right, that's yep. how I got it. So we, <laughs> so we have Nancy. And Nancy is in the interrogation room with Carlo. And she's telling Carlo, listen, there's no way out of this. You're going to go down for the murder of Kofi Jones. Your DNA Man, is, is on his body. Yep. There's no way out of this. But I'm going to tell you what I have witnessed. I have witnessed these people on um, death row getting the lethal injection. And the people that's giving the lethal injections aren't trained to do so. And guess what? Because it's a lethal injection, they don't even give a buck. Yep. So they try and they try and they try to hit a vein. And they could go 14, 15 times before they'd be like, you know what, bucket. We're going to put it in the groin. Yep. But you know what happens then? You're paralyzed. But you feel everything. everything. So but, it's, but, you, but you can't express it. But you can't express it. Like, you just dang. have to go through it until you die. <laughs> so she was like, is that something you want to experience? Like, is that where you want 
this yep. to end for you. Yeah, you know when you go back in the chair like this. Yeah, you, you ready? Like, yeah, you could ready to talk. So Carlos said, "Oh, like I don't know. I don't know about. See, I was big pimp until you said something about putting something. Oh in the yeah, uh, all the fellas are big pimp until you until you bring up that right there. You gonna do something to that? Uh, what you want me to do now? How are we gonna do that? <laughs> so on cue, the cop knocks on the door. And told Nancy, "You need to wrap it up because Carlos' lawyer is here." So then he gets his balls back. So he sits up like, mm -hmm. now my I, I feel my help coming on. Hmm. We know all of this is set up. So then we see a few days later, we have the judge sitting on the bench presiding over the arraignment of Carlos. Now, let me take you a step backwards a little bit. Back at the marina, when Daddy Baxter was trying to get in touch with Carlos to tell him that your butt is about to get locked up, we got the hitter and the judge back there at the marina trying to figure out what they're going to do with this dead body. Yep. They eventually took the body out on the lease boat that the judge had leased for this guy that has hush money and took him out there and disposed of him, put an anchor on his legs. They took him and he dropped down. And, and Cause when they threw the anchor down, I was like, is, is this dude not going to go down? <laughs> and then eventually they it said, Poof. I said, okay, now he gone. And they said, tie his shoes tight, whatever. It is birthday. See, that's the thing I, what I hate about so these, type, these type of movies. They give people ideas on how to get rid of bodies. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And next thing you know, we look on the news and people done took somebody and put a boat anchor on them and throw them in the middle of, and of the Atlantic really, Ocean. Shoot, James River. Ain't nothing new. <laughs> so, that was going on and we saw the judge over at his house. And he was burning the guy's wallet because they had to take his possessions off of him. Burning his wallet, burning his phone, and the judge was burning his clothes that he had on. And he was about to jump in the shower, right? Hmm. The dog. Yeah. That dog is going to get somebody <laughs> locked up. So the dog starts lick it, lick, uh, licking, licking the judge's feet. Why did a piece of brain matter yeah. drop out from the judge's pants leg and the dog is, is licking, licking it? it. Yep. On the floor like a little teeny piece of chicken liver. <laughs> so Adam comes in and he sees it because the judge picked it up and was like, I can't even believe that I just brought a piece of this man's brain home. And he put it on the countertop. Mm. And Adam picks it up and was like, Daddy, what is this? And the judge can lie, Lord. This man I'm can like, lie. bro, that water hose you were shooting yourself off with, you just didn't do it good enough, man. You got to check. Hey, you've been to the beach. <laughs> you got to take your shoes off. And spray your feet off, man. You nearly have to burn them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get that sand up off of you. So Adam comes in and was like, what is this? And he was like, son, yo, I, I went to the butcher earlier. And the butcher, you know how he always just cuts up some scraps and put them together for the dog. And he was like, but what is it? It looks like there's something white in it. He was like, I don't it's know. It's a heart. It's a piece of heart. He was, he was like, like, that don't look like no heart. I'm like, Adam, come on, bro. He was like, I, mean, I don't know. He was like, well, what kind of animal come from? I said, Adam, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know your daddy is in the middle of a kerfuffle right now. Right now is not the time to he's ask him. He's trying to keep your way out of jail. And you asking him about <laughs> what kind of animal <laughs> that this brain matter is coming from? No, just t whatever he says. Like, like it just said, whatever he said, he did. They did. He did that skit. Yeah, leave your daddy alone right now. Just listen to it. <laughs> so, then Adam realizes that his daddy has this cut across his face. We all know where that came from. Came from the marina. But he can't tell Adam that right now. Which he can, but yeah. he didn't. He told Adam that the dog, they were wrestling in the dog's paw. Gash him across the face. But the way the Adam looked at him was like, That's a god darn lie. Yeah, he, that dog don't wrestle with nobody. <laughs> nobody. He, yeah. So, the judge's phone was ringing, and we know that it's the black judge, and he was like, That's judge such and such. Let her know what's going on. I'm gonna jump in the shower, tell him I'll be late, and let her know about this so she won't ask no questions. Yeah. Okay, that went off without here. So now that I got you caught up with that, now we're at the arraignment for Carlos. Carlo is sitting there just as pompous as he wants to be because he knows that his daddy don't made an arrangement for him to walk up out of there like he never did anything. Hmm. So now they're trying to figure out is he a flight risk and can he be can he get out on bail right now. So of course we have the judge having to go through the formalities but we know that he wants him 
to get Baal because yeah. that's part uh, of his deal, deal that yep. he's going to let him walk. But now we have old girl over there was like, no, no, no. This dude is definitely a flight risk. He just got out of jail not even a week ago. He's committed a first degree murder. Mm -hmm. Why in the world would you set a bail for him? So the judge was like, well, give me your argument. And her argument was exactly what Carlos said when he was getting arrested. Mm -hmm. F you with something, something up the A yeah. with lube. And it was a lot. It was a lot what he said. And the judge was like, like excuse like, me. Like, when what? Come again? And he was like, she was like, that's, that's what exactly he said. what he said. What he said when he was being arrested. So that was a big F you to the judicial system. So I said, oh, okay. So this is about to get real sticky. Because <laughs> after that outburst, how in the world are you going to let this man walk? Well, at least get out on bail. And then Daddy Baxter, overcome with emotion, had a loud outburst, as the church people would say, from the congregation. Like you dumb. In the middle dumb. of court. Yeah. And so everybody was like, and he was like, the judge was like, if you do another outburst like that, I'm going to have to hold you in, in contempt, contempt and I'm going to have to have you arrested. Daddy Baxter said to Skid again. Yeah. And he said, do you understand that if you do that again, I will hold you in contempt. He just got up and walked Walk out. out. Yep. And I said, you just you just screwed yourself. Yep. You just screwed your freaking son. Because so now, there is no way that they're going to keep this judge so, yep. over this case. Exactly. Because it got out of hand under his watch. Yep. So then we so say... you can't even shut up for five minutes. Yes. Five minutes. So we see on the outside of the courtroom... Daddy Baxter had judge hemmed up. Like, you gonna get him off, you gonna do this. You I said mean, you gonna do this, you gonna do this. And after this and after that, I'm like, here you go again. You st And Nancy saw it. So she gets some cops to go over there because now they, she's like, no, we got to handle Mr. Baxter right here. And he was like, you know what? It's cool. It ain't no big deal. It was just a misunderstanding. I said, judge? I got a question though. Because the Baxter's this whole episode come off like they hot skit down there uh, in New Orleans. <laughs> like they got, you know, full one one on the police. They can do whatever they want to do and get away with it. How was they able to come and pick Carlos up? And y'all didn't get a tip. And you didn't get a tip. That, yeah. They really didn't get a tip. So what's up? So maybe they ain't as bad. Maybe you ain't that that you say you is. <laughs> I know. I, I know. know. I know. Yeah. Y'all heard okay. that song, ain't y'all? I can't I remember who the name of yeah. but. Was it Richard Gank? No. I don't know. It don't matter. It don't even matter. So, yeah, at this point now, so now we see that the judge has gotten the news that you are not going to be the judge selected to preside over this case. It's going to be judge such and such. So now he knows that, dang it, my whole deal with keeping myself alive because y'all already know that the judge is letting it be known that he was the one who killed um, Rocco, which he didn't. It was Adam. But everybody thinks that he did. Well, the people that sh are in the know think that the judge did it. Yeah. So, this is my way of settling the score. I'm going to make sure that Carlos walk, but how am I going to do that when I'm not over the case? Yeah, exactly. So, Daddy Baxter and the judge, though, had a whole conversation. And he was like, you need to tell me the how. How you going to make this happen? How you going to make this happen if you're not the judge presiding over the case? I don't give a darn about how they select the judges. How are you going to make sure that my son walks when you're not the one that's trying the case? He, he never said the how. But the next thing that we know, he's having drinks at the bar with the black judge. So now I'm assuming that the black judge is the one that's going to be over the case. And she plays no games. No. Nah. None. Because she was looking at him because, like, all this buzz kids you talking right now. <laughs> he yeah. was giving us all his sad story. So, because she was the one who didn't even want the Baxter boy to go to the brother's funeral. Because That's right. she, she was like, yep. no, I don't trust them. And one, they racist as heck. <laughs> yep. So, no, I don't, I don't trust it at all. So, they're at the bar having drinks. I mean, they tossing them back, straight backs. And um, judge was straight like... Straight no chase. No chase at all. So, the judge was like... You know, I, I have a love interest, um, but I think right now maybe mm -hmm. it's too soon. Yeah, Am I betraying my, my wife? wife? It's only been a year. And she like... She was like, if if she makes you happy, 
then then go for it. You already have your answer. So the next thing we know, we see the black judge, and I hate to say black judge, but I can't remember her name. And she goes ahead and takes her last drink to the head, and she puts her out. out of the bar. Now, in my mind, as Mike B was saying, in my mind, she had an Uber, a Lyft, waiting for her, her, her boyfriend, husband, somebody, son, daughter, waiting for her to take her home. Because yeah. that's what responsible people do when they out there drinking and acting a fool. Especially if you a judge. Especially if you got something to lose. Yeah. So she is getting behind the wheel of her car, so we see. And then we see the judge, he gets in a car on the passenger side. I said, oh, that's one nice Uber. But no, it's his girl. I think her name is Lee, the girl that he's interested in. So she was like, I'm about to take you home because I'm going to cook dinner for you. He said, oh, we're going the wrong direction. She said, no, no I'm, no, going, I'm going, to going to your house. I'm taking you to your house and I'm going to cook at your house. I said, I said hey, hey. Mm, go ahead, Big Pippin. As they are on their way to his house, the scene switches where we see the black judge driving her car and the lights flash behind her. Mm -hmm. That's everybody's worst nightmare, real talk. Yep. Is when you drive in, especially at night, and those the lights, lights get off. behind you because you like, just don't know. What the fuck did I do? <laughs> and usually you know you ain't did a god doing thing. Uh -huh. But but she know. She know so that she some been, skit uh -huh, is about to go know. down. Uh -huh. So they the cops walk right up on her. You could tell they were some racist a-holes. And was like, is this your car? She said, would you ask a white person if that's their car? Because it's a Mercedes. And then they go on and on and on. And she said, listen, I'm a judge. So then they was like, so did the judge go out and drink tonight? Or did the car go Jim out and drink, drink tonight? Because it smells straight up like booze, like daiquiris. I said, well, you got that wrong. <laughs> um, so eventually they told her to put her hands on the steering wheel. And the next thing we know, they have her on the outside of the car. Because I really thought they was going to shoot a real talk. They have but, her on the outside of the car. But I, want, but, but I want to back up and say something. That she did piss me off at the way she came at them. Yeah. Because you already know how it goes. I mean, you're a judge. I know you see it all the time. And you're going to come at them sideways knowing what they do to us when we do that. It's a catch-22 because they do it all day long and walk away and go home to their families. We just look at them wrong and we're dead. Yeah, so that's why I was like, just just comply. Yeah. Put your hands on the steering wheel, judge. You you you're just right? Yeah, you just took two shots of Hennessy before you, before you got in that car. That brown. Put your thing. hand on, on the steering wheel. And grip them tight. Yeah. Grip them tight. And pray in Jesus' name. So we saw that the judge and his girl Lee are at the intersection. And he looks over and he saw her being arrested. He distracted Lee. I think that's her name. By saying, I love you. And she looked away. Uh -huh. And she was like, uh-huh. And then they went on through the light. And I said, judge, did you just set her up. Yeah, you set up. Did you set her up to be arrested and get a DUI so that she will be disqualified yep. from that freaking case yep. so that they could take it and spin it back to you? Yep. Is that what he did? Yep. That's exactly what he did. Oh my freaking God. But as a catch 22, he had no choice. I mean, he had a choice. But in order for him to keep to save his own life, he set up his colleague because i think they were they was good, good friends it, yeah. i mean it appears that they're good friends anyway they but, always do that but, your, us, but your but your good friends can become your worst enemies too mm -hmm. especially if a murder on the line and they trying to get off yeah so, just turn like you said like you've been saying just just should have let adam just turn himself in you should have never even come out there and be scared of the baxters now no but. speaking of adam <laughs> speaking of adam it's, and now I'm getting all twisted because I, I already did a review and I don't know what I said and what I haven't said at this point. So we have Adam still having this situation going on with the Baxter daughter. Like, come on. So the Baxter daughter, once she saw her brother being arrested at the hotel, she runs to Adam as a, a form of comfort because they have bonded on the fact that both of them just had some major deaths in their family. And now she feels comfortable enough that she is telling Adam all the skit that just went down at the hotel. And she even said this. The wrong brother died. Yeah. <laughs> like, it should have been Carlo and not Rocco. Rocco was a good guy. He was a good brother. And now we got this one over here that's wrecking havoc. And he's still alive. Mm -hmm. But don't you ever tell nobody I said, said that, that. <laughs> But Adam thought that she was on to him 
where he said that he, oh he killed him he killed him and I was like I, I, Adam is I, I'm like Adam you just need to just end that relationship with he her he needs to ghost her on the spot just yeah. just just go ghost that's it that's you know all. if she call you don't answer she texts you don't answer yeah. Because yeah. you, you're you really at this point now where you can do it. You're yeah. not in too deep. Y'all haven't had sex. Mm -hmm. Like, y'all not in a relationship. You ain't met the family yet. Like, just just cut all ties. Yep. But he's... But he's 17, though. <sighs> and you know how they say you young, dumb, and full of what? And he ain't had an asthma attack since he killed that boy. No, he ain't. <laughs> so, <laughs> Lord, where was I at? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Big Mom. So we see Daddy Baxter now that he <laughs> he don't threaten the judge and told the judge, listen, you, you don't get get your son. He no, you, because he doesn't know that, that um Adam was the one yeah. who um killed his son. He thinks it's the judge. He's like, listen, when you lose a loved one, you lose a, a child, you go through a range of emotion now. Mm -hmm. You feel like a failure, you go through grief, and then you go to that final stage of not giving a buck. buck. So if my son goes to jail for this and I lose both of my sons, there's yeah, nothing that said, I won't do. It was to me to, to snatch your heart out and throw it in the river. In other words, I'll kill your son. Exactly. Yep. I said, I be darn. So we see um, Daddy Baxter, <clears throat> his header, walking through the hallway of this place with this trap music playing. I said, I say, that's, that, don't, that don't match them. <laughs> but then we saw that he was rolling up on Big, Big Mo. Mo. So now he I like her, man. Yeah. man. I like her. She needs to be on power. Absolutely. Power, 50 Cent, uh, uh, Courtney, all y'all. Get Big Mo. Get Big Mo. Even though she don't even got to replace Monet. I, we, nah. we can still Let keep, her work with let, Monet. Yeah, let her be another part of the competition. Let That's, her be the new distro. Yeah, yeah, that, that would be perfect. So we have Big Mo sitting there. And Daddy Baxter rose up on her and was like, listen, the Baxters, we don't deal with Heron. And she Until was like, today. <laughs> she was like, well, your son took $150,000 mm -hmm. from me in exchange for product. You got my money? Or do you have my product? Are you here to speak on your own behalf or your son's behalf? But either way, I got $150,000. And I am going to be made whole. I Not that I need to be made whole, but I... <laughs> I, I am going to be, in other words, I don't care what you're talking. Either you're going to give it to me voluntary or I'm going to get it by force. You just pick a choice. <laughs> and he was like, your 150000 is down, down at, at, at the police station. You can go down there and get it if you, you want, want it. <laughs> she was like, mm -mm, uh -uh. you don't understand. I guess right now you're not in the, you're not in the mood to settle the score. Yeah. So she you ain't in the problem much, solving business. You ain't in the problem solving business today. <laughs> so she pretty much dismissed him. And when she, when they left her body there, her hitters was like, So what was that? What was that all about? She was like, put get to the father. Through the son. Through the son. So we just gonna deal with the son. I said, Oh, she creating the war. But she said, but you, we um she told them, said we need to get the somebody on the inside to let him know that he can't hide from us in there. Uh-huh. I said, God don't. Okay, so Mo him. got hit us in there too. She got him in there too. In so, the prison that is. In the prison. I said, Oh my, this is not gonna be good. So back over there at the judge's house, I told you Lisa she was gonna go over to the house and cook him dinner for his birthday. When they get to the house and come to find out it was this big surprise um, celebration for his birthday. So it's really going off without a hitch. His closest friends is there and they're just telling him how wonderful he is, how good of a husband he was, how good of a father, judge. Man of integrity. Very much. And before all this, he was. He was, yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we just hear the dog. I told you, the dog... Yeah, that's it's going to be the dog is the snitch, man. That's that's the snitch. <laughs> <laughs> the dog is going to be the one that puts all of y'all in jail, because the dog ate the brain matter. Remember, hmm. the dog is behind them while they're eating dinner, and the dog goes, <laughs> <laughs> and everybody looks and was like, "What's wrong with the dog? The dog done puked everywhere. And guess what's in the middle of that puke? The daggone brain matter." And the judge, he's like, 
I said, what is up with every time this dog does something, he's literally stunned. Yep. I'm like, when he brought out the dirt, the bloody rag, he... It's probably because the dog always do it when company is around. <laughs> he does. He, every time when people... He, he's, he's a roach. Yeah. <laughs> that dog is a <laughs> roach. <laughs> So, Roaches don't never come out until you got company. <laughs> I got a question for you. So, do you think this whole, you know what, by the time we get to the end, I think it's going to be 10, 10 episodes, I think. Mm. I don't know if they're getting renewed for another season. I hope so. But, do you think all this is going to come crashing down on the judge, that he's going to get locked up, throw away the key, and it's going to be over? Or is Adam going to get killed by the Baxters to, for revenge and... Later on, the judge is still going to get locked up. How do you think it's going to end? I wish I really knew. I real talk. I wish I knew, but there's like two scenarios that keep going through my head. Is that one, the judge is just going to take the fall for it all. That no one has to know that Adam was the one who hit the Baxter boy. And that once it comes crashing down, judge is just going to take it all. Take the, take the um, sentence, do whatever it is. Because at the end of the day, he did all of this to protect his son. He didn't mean for him to go down in the, yeah. in the process, but that is, that's, that's maybe how it goes. Then it could be that things get so entangled. Cause like I said, Baxter daddy and judge, they so entangled with some skit now that if one goes down, they literally could snitch on the other and the other one goes down as well. So will it get to a point where that we just going to have to call it a wash? That they're going to find out that Adam was the one who really did do the killing. That um, hit that boy. And that they just going to have to be like, you know what? If you save my son like you said you was, I'm going to have to leave your son alone. And it's just going to be, we're going to have to shake hands and be enemies. But I can't touch you. But look, I'm going to add this and then we're going we gonna to hit up on out of here. What's stopping the judge from quitting his job, getting Adam... Jump on a plane and go into the Virgin Islands and restart their life over again. First of all, and nobody don't know. Don't know where bring they those kind of problems to the Virgin Islands. <laughs> I just, I just said because that's the first thing to pop in my head. Just anywhere international, they can get on a plane and go on because the Baxters don't have no hitters watching them to make sure that they are moving. Boy, so that. they can disappear in the night and they be really gone. Could. They really could. They can be gone, man. Do we have any more money left? Well, yeah, you do because he didn't buy the boat right out. Nah. And they had, they had his 401k, 401k money. He's got a hold on it. Got a hold on that. So uh, You do have a point there. But he don't want to leave New Orleans, man. I mean, at this point, he ain't got no god darn choice. <laughs> he got two murders over his head. Yeah, he does. Two murders. Two murders. Two, not just one. Your son killed somebody. and Well, I mean, technically, he didn't kill him. He just disposed of the but, body. But, hey, you are accessory to the crime because you was there. So, I don't know. I don't know, but if you have enjoyed this um, recap, go ahead and rate the video and also hit that subscribe button. Yeah, it's man. It's free 99. And at that point, we're going to bed, y'all. Straight from the VA. Ooh, the dirty, dirty south. Two up, two, two down. down. Holla. Yeah.